Good morning, folks, and welcome to our time of worship here at Whitehorse United Church. My name is Beth Roberts, and today I will be sharing the liturgy role with Ruth Stebbing. Brenda Prokopchuk will be sharing the message. To honor my friend Sheila, I went to the Church of Scotland website to read what they were doing today. This is how they are opening their service. We may not all be gathered in the same building, but at a time when we need each other so much, we are invited to worship together from where we are, knowing that God can hear us all and can blend even distant voices into one song of worship. So on behalf of Ruth and Brenda, I welcome folks here in the sanctuary, at home, or on the free Wi-Fi at Starbucks. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are, God hears us, God knows us, and God loves us. Bev, our minister, was into the church yesterday and apparently some bossy old nurse sent her home with very clear instruction that she was to go home, stay home for a minimum of 48 hours. And then the poor woman had uh, ran into an equally bossy social worker who reinforced that message. So Bev is at home, she is fine, the earliest that she should cross the threshold is Tuesday morning. But I know she's fine because she was texting and emailing announcements. There's an entire page here, folks, in about size six font. The bold cap locks, I'm going to assume, are the most important, and it is sign up for Easter worship by calling the church office so that nobody has to be turned away. So sign up. And I'm going to assume that she's going to send out all of the services in an email. But um, I checked uh, the last newsletter and of note there was um, a discussion on climate change and if you wanted to participate in that from our congregation, there was very clear instructions on how to sign up. And another thing that was, it was a plea of Bev's looking for volunteers to help out with the story time. So um, she had asked people to contact her directly and being that she's a, being a very good patient and staying at home, I think email is probably the best way to contact her. And are you ladies aware of anything else that I forgot to mention? Anybody else? Okay. So let us take a moment to prepare our heart and mind for worship. Please stand as you are able and join me in the introit. Voices United 412, this is the day. We will 
Hosanna. It's Palm Sunday. Our Lenten journey is almost complete. Today, we walk with Jesus into Jerusalem. We know what will happen there, but for now, we rejoice and shout our praises. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. Make a joyful noise, all the earth. dust and ashes, humans from the humus, one with the soil and water of God's good creation. We moved together through the past five weeks as Jesus moves toward Jerusalem and what awaits him there. The psalmist reminded us that God makes and keeps covenant, God's rainbow covenant with all the earth, God's covenant with Sarah and Abraham. Through you, God says, all the families of the earth will be blessed. God's covenant at Sinai, 10 words of life, sweeter than honey in the comb. We heard stories about serpents in the desert, mysterious healing, and we were reminded that God has written the covenant of love in our hearts. We have been learning what abundant life is and how to face death. This week begins with shouts of praise and rejoicing. Before it is over, there will be testing and trial, betrayal and confusion, fear and abandonment, and yet. And yet, we dare to believe that this is not the end, that the God who created heaven and earth, the Holy One, incarnate in human flesh and in the soil and water and air of create, the Creator's good creation, we dare to believe that God has not forsaken Jesus and has not forsaken us. Even in the midst of what is to come, in the shadow and the silence, in the very earth into which Jesus will be placed, God is there. Let's listen now as Jesus rides into Jerusalem. Join us together in hymn number 122 in Voices United and stand as you are able.
what is one of Bev's very favorite expressions? You can't have too much scripture. So here we go with the first scripture reading of Mark 11, and I'm going to read verses 1 to 11, and I am reading from the New Revised Script Standard Version. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying that colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those that followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, they went out to Bethany. He went out to Bethany with the twelve. May God bless that reading of the Holy Word. Please join me in the singing of Voices United 124, He Came Riding on a Donkey.
So now, now I know why Bev put the candle, the Bible, and the globe at this part. It's so that you guys get a sit down and I get a stand up. Sit down and, oh, Jesus is the light of the world and the candle comes forward. And God's word is the living word, and the Bible comes forward. And God so loves the whole world and the globe comes forward. Okay, so our next hymn is the Palm Sunday Rag. And uh, for those uh, people that it's not familiar uh, to, uh, Barry's going to play it over completely one time. And then we're going to sing it through twice, so uh, give it some gusto. <laughs> of fun that one. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we have come to you for forgiveness before, and in your mercy you have granted us your grace. Now in faith we come to you again. So often we wander from the path you set before us, living as if we no longer need your help. Instead of relying on you and your power to direct and save us, we depend on our own cunning. We build our lives on faulty foundations rather than the one you gave us in Jesus Christ. Forgive us, O oh God, our self-centeredness, and help us to center our lives in you. Amen.
But here is the good news. Christ Jesus came that we might have life in all its fullness, to forgive us in our failure, to accept us as we are, to set us free from the power of evil, and cause us to be the people we were meant to be. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now is the time to pass the peace, so please do it safely, and feel free to text your friends on your phone. the second time this morning, our gospel reading is Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 19. Hear now the word of God. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered the temple, the Jerusalem, and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him, for they were afraid of him because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. Let us now open our hearts and minds to the story of Palm Sunday as I share with you the message that Bev had prepared for today. 
Bev says when she first moved here, she was told that Palm Sunday was a celebration time and that she should stick to the happy part of it, waving of palms, singing of hosannas. Let us have this Sunday as a celebration, they said. So to those people today, for this Palm Sunday, she says sorry. <laughs> for Lent this year, we chose the theme, One with the Earth. We began with Ash Wednesday and being reminded that we are dust and will return to dust. We are one with the earth in a physical way. Made of stardust and mud, all of it sacred, all of it in covenant with God. And we approach the scriptures asking that this unity with the earth be renewed, formed and reformed like the clay in the light of the texts, in the light of the spirit speaking through them. If ever anyone is tempted to think that these readings are quaint little stories for children or dusty, antiquated accounts of events that no longer matter, if ever anyone was tempted to think that, I'm asking you, think again. This reading goes straight to the heart of us, calls for a renewal of heart, of mind, and soul, and strength, and intent. This stuff is as real and contemporary as earthy as it gets. At one level, it is a lovely story. It is. On the surface, if we didn't know otherwise, it would be a nice break from the readings of these past few weeks. But we do know what's coming. If this were a series of paintings, we'd have been in these past few weeks in the jewel tones, I think. Plums and burgundies, midnight blues, rich golds, earthy browns, the earthy browns of sun-ripened figs. Now, though, there's a change. Now, with this painting, in a way that almost makes us blink and turn away, we're in a riot of yellow and bright green the full light of Jerusalem midday with palm branches waving and children laughing, splashing with one another with the water toys the way kids do in the unbearable heat, splashing each other and probably aiming for the donkey, the drops of water catching the sun, glowing red in the air briefly, like drops of wine or blood. There's a harsh light to this scene, a light that you just know won't last, that hurts the eyes and brings out detail that we'd rather not see. And there he is, on that donkey, riding along, laughing with the children as he always does, as that donkey moves slowly and deliberately towards the city gates. This is how Borg and Crossman imagine it. Two processions entered Jerusalem on a spring day in the year 30. It was the beginning of the week of Passover, the most sacred week of the Jewish year. One was a peasant pr procession, the other an imperial procession. From the east, Jesus rode a donkey down the Mount of Olives, cheered by his followers. Jesus was from the peasant visit village of Nazareth. His message was about the kingdom of God and his followers came from the peasant class. On the opposite side of the city, from the west, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor of Idumea, Judea, and Samaria, entered Jerusalem at the head of a column of imperial cavalry and soldiers. Jesus' procession proclaimed the kingdom of God, and Pilate's proclaimed the power of empire. Pilate's military procession was a demonstration of both Roman imperial power and Roman imperial theology. And this was taken from the first week, day one. Why is this important? I think it's the point of the whole thing. Israel at this time is an occupied country. The Romans are their conquerors, their oppressors. 
and, as is true for probably every people conquered by a foreign power, they dream of the day when they will be free. Some dream, some educate, some wait for the right time, sure that the political tides will turn someday. Some plot violent revenge, insurrection. Within Israel, there was all this and more. And Israel as a nation, as a people, their heart is formed and reformed by the story of the Exodus, a time when God through Moses and Miriam and Aaron led them out from under a violent hand of an, a foreign despot, led them to freedom. This is their founding, their heart story, the Passover. And at Passover time, every year, they tell that story again and again. People from all over the country travel to Jerusalem at this time of year for the Passover, the story of their deliverance from a foreign power. If ever there was a time when tensions were high and feelings were raw, expectations on alert, it was Passover. The Romans knew that. And so they had extra troops at the ready. Their soldiers were on high alert. There would be zero tolerance for anything that might lead to a riot. The Romans, to give them their due, wanted peace too. They had to rule a very large empire made up of all the nations they'd conquered. Their policy was to let the regions do their own thing as long as they acknowledged the emperor and kept the peace. By this time, the emperor was called, are you ready for this? The emperor was called Prince of Peace and Son of God and Lord. Citizens of the empire had to acknowledge Caesar as son of God and prince of peace and lord, or else. And else meant violence in the extreme, including crucifixion. Peace through violence. Handy little system, that. My aunt used to say to me, Uncle so-and-so and I never had a fight, and I'd think, yeah, because you never crossed him. Because you knew what would happen if you did. Peace through violence. That was the Roman way. As long as you did everything they wanted, they'd treat you well and leave you alone. Is that the way to peace? It works, kinda. But is there another way? Jesus says yes. There is another way. He is the way. That's what Palm Sunday is about. That day in Jerusalem, the city full of people, the energy high, the possibility of rioting just on the edge. And Pilate, the governor, whose job depends on keeping the peace and impressing the emperor with the ability to keep these crazy Jews in line, Pilate, who isn't often in the city. He has a home on the sea, a beach house. Pilate decides to have a public display of his power. He organizes a parade of sorts. He marches in the west gate of the city with a big display of power. He's mounted on a white horse, a symbol of military victory. If they'd had tanks or something, he'd have been in one of those marching in with lots of soldiers, weapons at the ready, the sound of boots, and the clank of swords and armor. The message was clear. We're in control, and don't forget it, and we will tolerate no dissent. And on the outskirts of the city, anyone coming in would have to pass by. There were hanging bodies of those who had thought otherwise. Crucifixion as a deterrent, very effective. Can you picture that? Coming in from the west, Pilate on a white horse of victory, flanked by armed soldiers. On the other side of the city, 
Jesus chooses to enter through the northeast gate on a donkey, nursing a colt if you go with Matthew, flanked by adults and children waving branches and shouting Hosanna. Which parade are we going to join? Bev says she looked back to see what we've said other years on this day. And one of her sermons was called, Does This Donkey Have a Reverse? Meaning, do we have a choice? Is this the way set? Is the way set now? Is there only one way for this road to go? I don't know about that choice. But I do know about this one. Pilate's Parade or Jesus' Parade? The way of violence and power over people or the way of peace with justice and power that frees and strengthens? Some people would say that in a world like this, the way of nonviolence is naive and dangerous. What do you think? I don't know. And I can get very confused at times. But I know this. We need to open our hearts and tune our hearts to the possibilities of peace. And by hearts, I mean what the scriptures mean. Our minds, our intellects, our wills, our emotions. To learn all we can. Not to take what we hear on the news or, God forbid, read on Facebook and let that be la that. We need to learn, and really learn, about other people and systems and ways of thinking. We need to make sure that our intellects are as sharp as they can be so that when we apply our thinking to a thing, we will be bringing an intellect sharpened on the cornerstone of the gospel and our wills. It's one thing to know something and quite another to act on it. We need disciplined wills to do the things we've learned that make for peace. To do the unglamorous work of peace and justice making in our personal relationships and the making of public policy. And our emotions. We need to do what's necessary to tune our hearts to ways of forgiveness and gratitude and compassion practice these things until we know them how? By heart. By heart. All of that is to, de is to develop the habits of the heart that will lead us to join the parade coming in from the Mount of Olives with a donkey and the sound of peasants cheering, not the one coming in from the West with boots and swords. We are made in the image of a good and wise and loving creator. And we are beloved. And he calls us to walk the path of peace with him. To join the parade for which our hearts were made. For which they long. Our hearts won't rest until they rest there. Can we walk in the way of peace? Can we teach our hearts to beat in time to a donkey's steady hooves? The children say yes. The young people say yes. Jesus says yes. And even if their voices were to be silenced, the very stones would sing it out. And all the people said, Hosanna. Amen.
Please pray with me. Cross carrier, path walker, burden bearer, we journey for peace in the world. In Syria, in China, in Africa, in truth and reconciliation in Canada, in Yemen, etc., etc., places where people live in terror or hunger. We lift that cross and together carry the possibility of peace. We journey for hope in our communities, for those included and those excluded, because of opportunity or lack of it, because of vision or scarcity of it, because of aspiration or the want of it. We lift that cross and together carry the light of hope. We journey for love in our families and friends, for those who make sense of life for us. We pray for those who are ill and recovering, lonely and confused, anxious and stressed, and need love. We lift that cross and together carry the risk of love. We commit ourselves to journey the way, living in God's intent and the shadow of eternity. So be it. Amen. Let us join together in the eternal prayer taught to us by Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let's sing our final hymn. Voices United, one, two, three. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing of our time of worship together, I offer this commissioning and benediction. 
May God's spirit be alive in us all, that we may be a faith-filled people. May we be alert to God's joy and share God's gift of peace and hope. May the blessing of God creator, Christ and spirit go with us all, now and forever. Go now in peace. Amen.